Thank you. Any questions from members of the committee? Representative Quattrochi. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so we have uh, departmental help in assessing um, fiscal impact, of mm -hmm. course, in this building. Um, so basically, uh, I was going to ask you who would be responsible for these reports, but you, you basically said it, it could be up to us or any group or whatever, special group, specialty group. So my, my question is, um, isn't this basically, this is based, it's, it's an opinion-based opinion based, um, document attached to a bill. Yeah, and Rep, you might write something very much different from what I would write, and then we could say I, you completely disagree with my equity analysis and think actually it will impact different communities in these different ways. So, um, so yes, I, we thought about, and I think that, in, in, that there may be room for a state department to be doing some really in-depth equity analyses. Another bill in this package is going to ask the governor to do an equity analysis specifically around the budget. And, uh, and he has staff and departments and access to data that we might not have as easily easy access to. We also thought about whether to add an FTE to JCLS maybe to be doing equity work. And that's certainly something that I think we should talk about because I do think that there is room for it. But for this year, uh, to get us going and to get us starting doing it um, and down this path, we did, I, I did not want to put in something that would cost money and have a fiscal impact. Uh, it, it just seems like a lot. Um, uh, you don't feel that all the anti-discrimination laws that we have already, which are many, protect all these classes that, you're li that, are, that are listed in this, in this bill? So I think that we, that we do a lot of work on equity here in Rhode Island, and that's great and really important. I also know that if we're not thinking about it, we might not, it might not occur to us if we don't say it outright that lead pipes affect folks, particularly in Providence, particularly in black and Latino neighborhoods, and also affect um, renters who we can go look up the data. I did not for today, but uh, renters tend to be more people of color, uh, disproportionate to the um, overall population. And so we can talk about that, but we might have a whole bill where we don't talk about that at all. And I think it's really important for us to say our housing policies have been discriminatory and we have created um, situations where there is some segregation in our communities and we can look at maps and we can see it and we can say it, but if we're not saying it, we're not unwinding it intentionally. Right, and I guess for as an example, um, what you mentioned with the with the lead pipes, um, you know, uh, perhaps a a landlord might not want to install new pipes or whatever like that. But I guess that's where the where the opinion would come in. In my mind, is um, you know, it could be one, your opinion that you know that's the case. Maybe it could be mine or someone else's opinion that a landlord simply can't afford to do that. Right, which so, is why this legislation, which is not what we're talking about, but it's why the legislation is so great because it creates a pathway for funding, but it can we can then also have the conversation about who are the landlords and who are the tenants and should the landlord be allowed to make public health decisions for the tenants and what kind of equity or inequity does that create? Okay, uh, one more question, Chairman, if I could. Sure. Um, in the bill, it's, uh, I hope I didn't scroll. Uh, it, it, it's, it states that um, a broad equity impact statement accounting for race, color, ethnicity, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, all, the, all of the yep. uh, things listed, people listed here. Um, it, it seems very, very broad. So, for instance, in my in my um, thinking about bills, right, bills that I want to present, um, do I have to take into account 
uh, for instance, religion, do I have to take into account how it affects Satanists, Satanists in Rhode Island, or do I have to take into account with sexual orientation how it affects pedophiles in Rhode Island? Anything like that? Well, first, I want to point out that pedophile is not a sexual orientation. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. Okay. So, I, like, my equity right now is pointing out okay. that that was really offensive. Oh, I didn't mean to. Uh, are you a pedophile? I'm sorry. All right, I can think we we're, getting a, we're getting a little off. Can we stick to the merits of the yeah, bill? We're getting a little off track I here. I didn't let's mean just, to offend anybody. That's okay. Honestly. Let's just ask questions yeah. about the bill. If you have any questions about the bill, you can uh, post So, I, I mean, I think this is an example of why we need to be talking about equity, because we need to, we all need to be having these conversations about what is equity and what isn't equity. <laughs> and... Um, so that I, we have a whole bunch of folks um, who are, I haven't seen the, the sign up sheet, but I know that there are probably half a dozen people from our community advocacy organizations here to talk about why they, from their perspectives as a community, want us to be legislating like this. And this is a part of our work at To Be The People's House and to support communities and to build together a state that is getting better and better all the time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions? For, yes, 